Hello everyone, my name is Stephen George and I know how to play a thousand blank white cards. You probably don't, which is why you are watching this video. You're in luck. I'm going to teach you how. If you want to play a thousand blank white cards, the first thing you're going to need is blank white cards. These are 3 by 5 blank index cards. Now, you can get these at Walmart. I think you get a hundred for like 50 cents. Also, um, they come in blank and lined. I would recommend getting the ones that are blank because well, they're blank and the lines won't get in your way. Uh, you're also going to need uh, a writing utensil, pens or pencils, and you're going to need some friends. You need uh, at least two people to play a thousand blank white cards, although you can technically play with any amount of people. I've played games that involved 20 people before. They're a little absurd, and honestly, it's probably best for two to six, but you can play with any amount if you want. The first thing to understand about a thousand blank white cards, and this is definitely the most important rule, Winning is not important. Um, the goal is not really to win the game. The goal is to just have fun. If you are trying to win the game, you're probably doing it wrong. To play a thousand blank white cards, obviously you're going to need index cards. You don't need a thousand. That's just the name of the game. Um, probably you're not going to need any more than probably two to three hundred. I'm pretty sure these are fifty cents, so you could probably spend less than two dollars and get all the index cards you would need for even up to like six people. Uh, I would advise having everyone create uh, 10 to 20 cards before you start the game because the cards that you create is going to be how you play the game. Thousand Blank White Cards is a card game that you create. You alter the rules even as the game is progressing. It's wild, it's wacky, it's a ton of fun, and it allows you to be very creative. So you know what you need. You have your cards, you have your utensils, and you have your people who are going to play, and you know that you need to create 10 to 20 cards apiece. Okay. What constitutes a card? Well, uh, how a thousand blank white cards works is uh, you have a stack of cards that you have created and everyone draws from the, the deck, you have your deck of cards, and uh, play continues until there is no cards left in the deck. At the very end of the game, you add up all your points and whoever has the most points wins. But uh, once again, as I said earlier, it's not really about winning. The first thing I'm going to show you is what a card looks like. Uh, here is a very, very typical card. You'll notice at the top of the card we have a title. This card is called Whole Bunch of Grapes. And then we have a picture that describes what the card is. And then we have a descriptor. Now most of the cards that you make are probably going to be point cards. Uh, because that is how you actually win. It's nice to have cards that do funny things and crazy things. But if someone is going to win the game, you need points. So you're going to need to make at least, you know, some of these cards. So this card is worth 200 points. Uh, here's another card I've made. Batman. I'm the gosh darn Batman. And uh, this card is worth 600. Um, now you can make the cards worth any amount of points that you want. Generally what I like to try and enforce is only increments of 100 from negative 1000 to positive 1000. So for example, um, this is positive 200 points you could make a card that's negative 400 points. So, you know, anywhere from negative 1,000 to positive 1,000 in 100 point increments. I mean, you can do plus 777 seven, if you want. You could do plus 10,000 points if you want. You really can do anything, but um, I, I like to try and enforce that because it keeps the game kind of more like a game as opposed to a crazy madhouse. After you and all of your friends have made about 10 to 20 cards, because that's probably the amount you're going to need to start a game, uh, shuffle all the cards up and uh, that is your deck. Place them all face down because you don't want to see what's coming up. Uh, now generally I like to deal everyone five cards. If for whatever reason your deck is small, maybe everyone didn't make 10 to 20 cards, you can do four or even three cards. It still works, but once you have enough cards in your deck, you'll want to use five because five's pretty standard in my opinion. So at the beginning of the game, deal everyone five cards and then whoever wants to go first just goes first. At the beginning of every single turn, you're going to start by drawing a card from the deck. Then you'll have, assuming you had five cards to start with, you have six cards. You choose a card and you can play the card in uh, one of three places. You can play it in front of yourself, which is your own point area. We, we like to refer to it as the play area. You can put it in front of any other player, which is their play area, or you can put the card in the center, which will apply to everyone. So as an example, let's say in my opening hand, uh, I have whole bunch of grapes, which is plus 200 points. 
Now, you get to draw one card a turn, and you get to play one card per turn. So for my turn, I'm going to say I'm going to play a whole bunch of grapes on myself, which would give me plus 200 points. And then you would go clockwise to the next person. So the next person sitting next to you would draw a card, and then they would play a card. Now let's suppose for a minute I had this card, Sniper Fire, negative 700 points. This card cannot be played to the center. So this is a descriptor that says basically you can't give everyone negative 700 points, because if it's in the center, it applies to everyone. So on my turn, I could say, you know, the person I'm playing with, I'm going to say, I'm going to put, I'm going to give you Sniper Fire. So this would go into, you know, their play area and now they have negative 700. Let's just say for argument's sake, they had the grapes as well. So negative 700 and positive 200 is negative 500. So right now their points would be negative 500. So this continues. On someone's turn, they draw a card and then they play a card. And remember they can play it on themselves, another person, or to the center where it affects everyone. So if I wanted to, I could put a whole bunch of grapes in the center. And when I put it in the center, everyone gets plus 200 points. If I get a negative card, I'm probably going to want to play the negative cards on other people, maybe someone who's on my nerves, etc., etc. Anyway, play continues until the deck is gone. When someone goes to draw a card from the deck, and there's no cards left to draw, the game ends immediately. I mean, you can alter the rules to say you continue playing the cards in your hand, but we don't play it like that. We just say the game is over. At that point, you see how many uh, points you have, and the person with the highest points wins. So, Steven, you might be saying, uh, do I need to keep track of these points on a, on a pad or something like that? Well, no, actually, you don't. And the reason is the points are going to change wildly, wildly. Uh, you don't add up your points until the very end of the game. And things can change quite a bit, because right now I might have negative 500. But then something else could happen. A card like this. This is Wrath of God. This is a throwback to, uh, to magic stuff. Place all cards in play into the discard pile. In addition to a deck, there is a discard pile. So, let's say that I do have negative 500 points. I'm not really happy about having negative 500 points, and on my turn, I decide to play Wrath of God. So I play that, and all cards in play move into the discard pile. So all the things I have would go to, you know, the discard pile. And now your wheels are turning. You're saying, wait, it's not just about point cards. I can do anything, and yes, 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 be creative, because uh, not only are cards like Wrath of God amazing, um, I've created a lot of cool cards, and, and so did everyone else tonight, but I'm going to be showing off some of the stuff I did, because I'm proud of it. This is an infamous card I did back in high school, I call it Pack Mule. Uh, you get to draw five cards, so you have a lot of ammunition, and to balance the game out, you lose your next turn, so when your turn comes around, you get skipped. Uh, some people like to do more fun type stuff with Thousand Blank White cards and not make it more, instead of a game, make it more funny. So this is the Pirate Voice Transmogrifier. Basically you can play it to a play area, which means in front of a person, and then on their turn that person has to speak like a pirate, or you can play it to the center, and then on each player's turn they have to speak like a pirate. So it kind of adds a, you know, a fun element, because some people like to play it like it's a game, like very strategic, like magic. And then other people like to make people do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like earlier, um, I was doing jumping jacks and, and touchdown dances and all this ridiculous stuff. So, you know, the sky's the limit. Uh, and depending on who you're playing with, you might want to do one or the other. To give you some other ideas, uh, here's some more cards that I worked on. This is uh, Sunshine and Rainbows. Uh, play this card only to the center. See, I'm, I'm asserting that you can't play this to an individual person. Remove all the negative point cards in play. Then I have another one I made here called Popper's Trinket. You play this card to a play area, not the center, so this can only be played to uh, a person and not everyone. And as long as you're not in first place or tied for first, you can draw two cards a turn. And if at any point you move to first place, you discard this card immediately. So that's kind of balancing out the game, saying, you know, you, you can start drawing two cards a turn, uh, but you're probably going to move into first, and when you do, you lose the ability to actually do this. But it's fun. It's, uh, these, these kind of cards are really fun. After you've played a game, your mind is going to be just swarming with ideas. Um, you're going to be like, okay, I could have done this, this is another cool idea, um, you know, this would be a nice touch or whatever. So when your first game is done, get the cards back out. Start making more cards. Um, if a card was too powerful, because that happens, sometimes people um, you know, make cards that are just stupid powerful that kind of break the game. 
If that happens, then you guys can vote on it and say, okay, we should take out this card. That was a little much. Maybe we should change the card. Um, that happened tonight as well. We had a power shield card that was like, nothing can affect me. And we're like, ah, well, that should, uh, we should alter that a little bit to make it more fair. The more you play, the more ideas you'll come up with and the more cards you'll create. And then eventually you're going to have a lot of cards. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a, a crazy amount of cards. So then whenever you start a game, um, you can tell everyone to pick like their 15 favorite cards from the pile or whatever. And then you are playing with favorites. Uh, and it takes a while to get to that point. You have to play quite a few games and create quite a few cards, but it's really rewarding. Uh, I played this game a lot in high school, and uh, I actually shared it with people on the internet back then. I, I, I didn't do it in video form. I did it on a, on a blog or something, but uh, a lot of people played it. A lot of people loved it. You guys, you guys got to play it. It is so much fun. The only other thing worth mentioning is uh, terminology. I mean, you guys can do your own terminology. Uh, personally, we like to refer to the areas in front of individual players as play areas. So when we're writing down, I mean, you don't want someone to, to, to draw a card and read it and not know what it does. So you want to try and be as thorough as possible. The area in front of a player where you put point cards or other effects, uh, that's the play area. That's what we call it. If you want it to affect everyone, we call it the center. And they literally go in the center. The things that are going to be in the center of the table are cards that are applied to everyone, the center. There's also the deck and then the discard pile. And nothing is holy in the game, um, definitely, because you could make a card that uh, goes into the discard pile and gets cards back out. Um, I mean, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. You can also play with only the cards you've created beforehand or, and this is a lot of fun as well, you can slip in some blanks which means if you draw a blank card, you are given a lot of power. You can actually make a card uh, during your turn and play it right then and there. Alternatively, you can have a uh, blank stack of cards sitting there so when people get ideas, they can make cards and then they can slip them into the deck during play. Um, personally, I like that because it's still a random thing, um, but you can put blanks in there and pick them up and draw with them, you know. You can do your own thing. I mean, really, make the game your own. So just to recap, you are going to need uh, blank index cards and pens and friends. At the beginning of the game, you're going to have to create probably uh, 10 to 20 cards before you actually start playing. Once you've created all the cards, shuffle them up, that's your deck, deal out five or less to each player. Uh, whoever wants to start can start, and on every turn, you draw one card and you play one card, unless you know someone makes a card that says to do otherwise. You can play any card on yourself, another person, or to the center where it affects everyone. If you put it on yourself or another person, we call those play areas, but you guys can call them whatever you want. Play continues until there is no cards left in the deck. Whenever someone goes to draw a card from the deck and there is no cards, play ends immediately, and then you uh, count up all the points and any other effects that might come into play, and uh, whoever wins, wins. Whoever has the most points. Unless, like, there's another card. I made a card earlier. Yeah, this card. I made this card called Golf, so this actually changes the win condition. Play this card to the center. As long as Golf is in play, the person with a score closest to zero is in the lead. Having a negative score does not count towards this, so the person with plus 400 is ahead of the person with negative 200. So, I mean, that changes the win condition. You know, you might have a card in play that says uh, the person with the lowest score, you know, including negatives, is the winner. You know, you can do anything, really. Have fun. If you want to make someone do jumping jacks, make them do jumping jacks. Anyway, I hope I've done a pretty thorough job of explaining how to play this game. This game is super, super fun. A really good party game. Um, like I said, best with two to six people. Can be played with any amount of people, although it does get a little crazy. I'd recommend breaking up into smaller groups. Um, but give it a shot. Give it a shot. And if you have any questions, I respond to comments, unlike other YouTubers, so leave a comment below if you do have a question, and uh, I'll try to answer it for you. But just remember that there are no hard rules, so if your question is rule-based, don't ask it, because you can do whatever you want. This is how we play, other people play differently, um, but this is just a really fun game, uh, really inexpensive, and uh, I would love to, to see what you guys create. So if you do play this game and, and you end up making cards, um, Take some pictures or video of the cards that you make and uh, make the video response to this because I'd love to see what you guys come up with because it's, it's always interesting to see what people come up with. And I'm going to put some of the cards that we created tonight um, at the end of this video so you can see and maybe get some ideas for what you could do and 
copy them if you want. Some of them are actually really good cards. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned something. And if you think you have some friends that would enjoy it, send them this video. Like I said before, this is a really fun game and everyone should know about it. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I will see you guys later. Thank you.